going to do is we are going to create a low poly uh, old radio. Um, now, usually before I start making anything um, as a 3D model, I actually try and get some reference to what it is I'm going to try and create. So what I've done um, is looked for old fashioned radios at the moment, and what we're going to hopefully do is to make one that looks a little bit like this. Um, not really into creating things that don't really have some personality to them and unfortunately most modern day radios look a bit boring and I don't particularly want to create a 3D model that's going to bore me to death <laughs> so everybody um, we are going to have a go at doing one that looks a little bit like this and this um, first of all what we're going to have to do in 3ds Max is make sure the unit is set up is correct. I actually like working in centimetres when I've got a smaller object, uh, so I'm going to change that to that. Uh, we start off um, with a box. Which I'm going to have in the middle here, so I'm going to just right click off it and go into the parameters for that box. So you can see it's, at the minute it's about 40 centimetres. Um, by about 39.4, but we actually change them all um, to around 40. So the usual radio size. Um, I'm going to have my segments at around 3 for each. Um, just this will allow me to do a little bit of changing the shape in the quite a low poly um, way. Once we've done that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. Um, also move it into the dead centre by right clicking down here at the bottom. With this, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a couple of modifiers in my file list to change the way in which this looks so that we can get the shape that we've got here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply something called an FFD modifier. Um, I like because we've got the three segments for each. I'm going to add a three by three by three. Um, you can do two by two or four by four. Um, we're going to stick with a three by three. If you open up this stack, um, you'll see there's a control points. Now, this is enabling me to do, like we have in the vertice mode, is actually to change the shape of the object by selecting these, holding control. I'm going to move these down, change the shape a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to get the middle ones, I'm going to move them up. So we'll start getting a little bit more like this shape that we've got here. Um, yes, we'll make it a little bit more pointy, but we'll get to that in a moment. Right. The next part in which I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the back a bit down so we get this slope looking object. I'm also going to get the next set and put it down a little bit further. And keep selecting them so that we get this shape. So it looks as if we've got a bit of a gradient, a bit of a slope to it, like it has done on the other. Okay. Once I'm happy with the primary shape, I'm going to right click it and I'm going to convert it back to an editable poly which collapses the stack. Now we've got a little bit more of the object shape. Um, we need to start looking and knowing really how, how many polys that we're using. This one we're trying to stick below 350 tries. So to see that, what we're going to do is right click on our plus sign, go to configure viewport, then we're going to go into statistics and click try count on or triangle count. Press apply and OK it, and then press 7 on the keyboard. And we've noticed that our measurements now actually turn up here. Now the next part. What we've got here is we've got a fair amount of detail in front. It's actually inset into it, so we've got this around the outside. And then we've got a couple of the little uh, knobs that we're going to put on there. So what we're going to do next is apply an inset to the front of the object. So we we'll select these. Be careful when you're selecting and you've got the select and move on, because sometimes it will move the uh, polys as well. So it's probably safer to use just the select object. Now with this selected, what I'm going to do is in the polygon sub-object mode, scroll down to inset and press the little box next to it. Once it does that, we'll see that we've got our little bit made into the middle. So we're going to move that to around three, about a lip of about three centimetres. Once we have that, we're going to press OK on the tick button. Okay. 
So we've got a little bit of an inset there. What we're going to do next is have this selected, and we're going to extrude inwards as well, using the box next to it. But this time, we're going to minus our extrusion, so it's not going to go out, it's going to go in, and we're going to go in another 3 centimeters like we had the lip, and then press the OK button. So now, we've got our little inset. Okay, you see we're moving up to 156 now. Now from here, we need to start putting some of this detail on that we have on the front. So what we're going to do is we are going to create some sub-objects as well that are going to enable us to add them to it. So we are going to create a cylinder, only a mini one, but what we're going to do is change the radius of that cylinder here to around three centimeters as well, we'll keep it simple, and the height we're going to have at around five centimeters. Height segments, we are going to right click here so they only have one, and the cap segments will keep as one, but sides we're going to move that down all the way to around six. I like to keep equal numbers so we'll go with six. Let's right click this and convert it to a display poly. Okay, so what we're going to do now, is I'm going to turn the angle snaps on, and I'm going to rotate this object with it turned on 90 degrees so it's at the forwards position. Then in the front view, so pressing F on my keyboard, we can see that it's not actually in the front view. So we're going to select the two objects and we're going to rotate them in the with the Y axis and 90 degrees so it looks like it's facing forward. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to press F4 so we can see the wireframe even when it's not selected and we're going to move these in and we're going to try and get it so that these lines are on the lines of the object we've got one here, we're going to press shift and the, use the move tool to place another the other side let go and we'll get this what we're going to do is we change it to a copy press OK and finally we're going to do this once more above it, in between the two and copy that one. So now we have three. What we're going to do now from here, so we go back into perspective view by pressing P. As you see, they're not inside the object, so we're going to select the other ones. I'm going to move them so that they are inside this object. The next part, we're going to select the radio again, and we're going to move these two further up, these two vertices. Okay. And what we're going to do then into the edge and we're going to select between here and we're going to make a connect. Select back into the vert, grab the top one and move this up a little bit higher. So we have a bit of a triangular shape like we have on the radio. And we're going to try and make it look a little bit like the uh, middle part here. From there, what we're going to do is move these further out, so select these two vertices and use the scale tool and we're going to move them outwards. So we're going to get this bit of a look. Okay. So with that now, what we are going to do is we are going to use a new tool. We're going to go into the create panel and change from standard primitives to compound objects, click boolean, pick operand B, and with these objects that are inside this object, we're going to click them, and you see it cuts inside it, right click the object, and go to the poly, I'm going to do the same for all three, so that we have those three objects cut into the main object. And this is important because if we're doing an object that we want to keep as one whole element then we need to cut the objects into them. With these cut however, what we're going to do is we're going to select the inner parts of them for each I'm going to press the delete button on the keyboard so we get rid of them. 
from there, what we're going to do is we're going to select the borders that are now open, hold control to do multiple, and then what we're going to do is go down and we're going to press the W button for move, and we're going to hold shift, and we're going to move them out. Okay, so you see that we want to get it about three meter, three centimeters again, as close as you can. You can see on the bottom coordinates down here that it was about three. Okay, with that done, what we're then going to do is press cap for all of them, and we can see that they're all going to be closed. But what we need to make sure is that we don't have something called end guns. Now these are five-sided shapes or more. Now we want to stay to four sides or three sides. So we're going to go back into vertex subobject mode, and what we're going to do is we are going to click on here and here and just connect the middle one here and the middle one here and connect and the middle one here and here to connect what we're going to do next is clean up this little area so that it's a little bit nicer to look at um, and there's no errors so what we're going to do whilst we're in vertice so object mode go into target weld and we're going to target weld these two here these two here, these two here, these two here, and we're going to try and clean up the, the look of the object as much as possible so that we don't have lots of vertices all over the place taking up our tri count. Right. And well, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do some editing again of the object's shape. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some more detail to this area, like we've got here, with a couple of little bits and bobs. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in the edge mode, we're going to click these four, and we're going to connect between the two, two of them again, and we're just going to stick with the one and press OK. Back into the vertices object mode, and we're going to click and move them a little bit higher so we get this more of a rounded shape. We're going to click these two and we scale them so we get even more of a rounded shape. Same with the above. Okay, so from there, what we're going to do as well is go to poly to object mode, select row 4, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and create that gap in the middle. So in fact, we're going to use two first. We do a little mini inset on that side, click these two, another little mini inset on this side. Just stick to the one centimetre for both. With this, we're going to have them all selected and extrude inwards so that we get that sense of detail that we were after that was on the shape. So if we go to three centimetres in like we did with everything else, we'll keep it relatively the same. Press OK and leave it like that. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the poly count again. So we're going to go in the vertice of object mode, target weld, this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, because it doesn't actually change any of the way that the radio looks. So we can lose some of our try count that we have being used up. From there, what we're going to do as well is we're going to try and put some more detail on the outside. So as we can see on here, we've got like a, a bit of a, a base for the object. So we're going to put one of those or create one of those ourselves. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into polygon object mode, click the bottom, polygons, and with that, we're going to extrude, so it's going to come downwards, and move it to around another three centimeters and press OK. Once we've done that, I'm going to select all the outer ones as well around the object and do the same. And have three centimeter out. But this time we're going to change this top part by clicking it from group to local normal and it's going to all come out then. So we're going to have this uh, base like thing around the outside. From there, what we're going to try and do is we're going to the top view, which is T. We're going to select the vert, and we're going to select these ones, use the Y axis to straighten them out, select these ones, 
use the X axis to straighten them, straighten them out with the button and select all of them. Y axis to straighten them all out. And the same again with this side in the X axis to straighten them out. So when we go back in the perspective view, we should have a perfectly straight lip all the way around. Okay, so this is starting to take a little bit of shape now. But what we can do is start losing some more detail that we have done with other around. So we're going to move this from underneath and target well these because we don't need them as they don't change the shape. Let's get into the habit of doing this because it actually enables you to have and use a lot more polys than what may have been readily available for you. I'm going to do this with all of these as well. So that we actually lower the count as much as possible. And then here at the front, we're going to do the same. So that we really lower the try count as much as we can. There we have it. A radio. Looks like it. Let's move these in the target world. Again. Don't do anything with the shape there. And the same with these. Same with these ones. side because they do actually change the shape there. Ta -da, ta -da. And there we have it, our radius.